I always do just the surprise. Hey, guess what? We're back and we're recording. Finally. I actually remembered where the record button was. <laughs> just, I mean, luckily it says start recording. I probably would have I mean, forgotten. Pretty, it's pretty obvious. But giant red button. Dude, I would have forgotten. Uh, it's gone so long. I would, man, we've been out of this for a while. It's been a it's, hot minute. Uh, we went two weeks without an episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It feels way longer than that. Weird. Well, uh, in my defense, well, in your defense, week one, I was actually supposed to do, we had it all set up, supposed to do an interview with Scott at Jeep. Mm-hmm. Uh, which basically we were going to spend the entire episode blaming him for everything that was wrong with everybody's <laughs> opinions on Jeep. And, you know, I texted him and messaged, yeah, that sounds great. Cause basically what we were going to do is like, like this, we're going to put out some real, like this is real Jeep stuff. Like none of these yeah. idiots on Facebook that are like, Oh, I hear there's going to be a 7.3 Ford power stroke going in the gladiator <laughs> next year. Like, no, none of that. Right. And uh, he's like, yeah, it's a good idea. Let's do that. And then he caught that crap that's been going around. Mm-hmm. Um, we got it. We actually had one of the techs in Greensboro here this morning. Actually, got it. Got that crap that's been going around and hitting everybody. We had a guy down in Charlotte that had it earlier in the week, or not, maybe even two. So that crap's been going around, but it got him. And he's like, "Dude, I woke up feeling like crap," and I was like, "Man, I'm, Caleb's on a boat somewhere. You ended up getting. <laughs> you were on your freaking honeymoon cruise. Yeah. Got diverted to like freaking another country." Yeah, to not get hit by uh, to not we get hit headed, by a hurricane. We were headed directly for the Eye of Helene if we would have I stayed uh, stayed where we were going. So the captain made a, a last minute call. We we made it as far as getting past Havana, Cuba. Like we were like within hours of being in Mexico, and captain called out and was like, "Nope." He said, "This is too too much. Uh, we're going to make a, a last minute change. Uh, we're going to go to the Dominican Republic instead." Um, Great sorry. I mean, he, he gave us the, the I mean, well, the, he, not he, but the cruise line gave us credits back that we used on ship that we used to pay for an excursion and our drinks on board. It came out fine. The Dominican's beautiful. It was a good time. Had a oh, great man, awesome. The Dominican's like, amazing. That place it, is it was great. Um, so yeah, then, then last week, uh, we <laughs> saw the after effects of, of Helene yeah. and, and all of us were doing absolutely anything we could. Um, as outlaw to, to kind of coordinate efforts across the board. I mean, I lost count of how many efforts we were, we were doing, um, to try to help out with there. Um, but now that that's, I don't want to say it's over, but we can take a breath. We can get back to podcasting and kind of resume somewhat of a normal schedule, which is always appreciated. Yeah. No kidding. I mean, that was weird. That storm just, I mean, it like split out lawn too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it went right up. <clears throat> it kind of hit. The new shop in Greenville, Spartanburg, and they were out of power for almost a week. Yeah, and uh, luckily that was a, that was a that was a brand new building, and that building was that's that's a pretty stout building right there off uh, Interstate eighty five. And uh, so the building was fine, and but you know David that 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 has Greenville, you know he lives in Rutherfordton. Yeah, which is right down the road from the city now that everybody knows. Um. The, the little town that got wiped off the map out there, like in the Edneyville area, the Bat Cave mm-hmm. area. Yeah, he's uh, there's not a couple far other from that at all. Right. And he's right down the road from that. Just just right down the road. Chimney Rock uh, was the big one that I was that I was thinking of. That's kind of the one that everybody saw online that just kind of got wiped off the map. Yeah. Um I did see today that there was a private construction company and a couple of government agencies in there rebuilding that highway between Chimney Rock and Bat Cave because that Dude, that road just looks like a riverbed now. Yeah, like you don't even know there was a road there. You're no, like, there's nothing crap. left. Even the main street of of like oh. the town of Chimney Rock, all the stores are wiped out. There's barely anything insane. left. I'm pretty One sure one side the of the road is just gone. Be, yeah, yeah, the river side of the road is just gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was like a water park there. I mean, there was there was some stuff in yeah. that town. Oh yeah, and uh, it's just all gone. But mm-hmm. we, not just us, but a lot of people came in, got a lot of supplies up there, and and they're. I think they're good on supplies now. The one thing I did here is don't forget about us in 30 days when we need it again. So mm-hmm. we'll probably be back up there again in 30 days doing it again, yeah. um, you know, until it's – because it's just so close. I mean, we – you know, before Greenville Spartanburg was open, we had a store in Nashville, and that would have been wiped. Like, it would have been – you know, who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Arden area got hit very, very hard. So yeah, I don't know if that, that was building Fletcher is Arden. still – Yeah. I don't know if that building's still standing, but I know that uh-huh. everything around that building was – Hit full force. Well, two sides of that old property were a creek mm-hmm. that went down to the river. 
Like it was yeah. like a mile down the, this creek to the river. Yeah. And you could see where it went up in the hills. Um, that was crazy. It would actually come down from Asheville. So because I mean, where, where that's at, it was a little bit down 26 out of Asheville. So that was crazy. But not that it's completely past us, but we are going to try to resume somewhat of a normal schedule. And we weren't going to we weren't going to stop doing podcasting. So with that, we've got uh, we've got some good adulting is hard stuff today. Get bring bring a bit of a bring a bit of levity back into the world. We've got some great mailbag questions. Talk a little bit about Jeep. What's coming up? A um, couple of events, all that good stuff. Just wrapped up Trail Hero out in St. George. So, yeah, let's uh, let's not uh, let's not delay any further, and let's let's get into this. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? <laughs> This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to to Dust. Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. Well, anybody listening to this episode can say they saw our long form intro for the last time. It's <laughs> it's being retired after today. Yeah. Um, they made it almost it, 50 episodes. Yeah. Um, almost we're getting, 50. We're honing in on 50 for sure. Uh, yeah. Something that kind of made me chuckle a little bit. Uh, when I made that intro, I think we made it back in uh, February of this year. Yep. Uh, and at, this morning, man, uh, had the windows open a little bit in the house and uh, it it's chilly again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i mean i know we're probably gonna hit a couple you know spikes back in the 70s again but for a, i mean i'm wearing a hoodie today so i'm I'm kind of excited for the the weather to cool down a little bit and uh and kind of start revamping a little bit and and see what we bring to the show see what new guests we have on it's almost time to start reformatting some stuff and uh what i think once we get to 50 we're you know we got to keep an eye on the next 50 yeah that's right um well i was looking at the weather too because it was it was like i think up here it was like 52 or 53 this morning and i drove the mm-hmm. jeep i drove the took the jeep home last night because we're doing some stuff to the truck and then you know we pull out tuesday morning for uh, ultra four nationals mm-hmm. um what could be my final ultra four race it could be i know it will be my last as like a full-fledged member of you know kind of ultra four in the 4600 class as we transition over next year now i will say ultra four released a uh a pretty, you should you should like flip up the Ultra Four schedule here, Caleb. Ultra, Ultra Four schedule here. <laughs> um, they got twelve races scheduled next year. Yeah, that's but, actually a pretty well, good schedule. <laughs> calm down, because yeah, if we remember from last year about this time, they released the schedule for twenty twenty four, and then it went, the it nuclear went bomb went off, mm-hmm. and the budget got cut, and then it got sold, and then. You know, a lot of races got changed, and then, I mean, it was just, the 2024 for Ultra 4 was a mess. Now, I hope that 2025 is better. They have gone to three divisions, West, Central, and East. They've got a Joker race in each one, which I assume is just a race that you have to run in each region if you want to run for a national. Okay. Um, but it's going to be a lot of windshield time if you want to do that, because the West is West. The East mm-hmm. is I think the East race, the East Joker, I think is Holly Fest in Kentucky. Okay. And then there's a race in Roush Creek, which, you know, talk about try to make it tough for me to say bye bye to Ultra Four. Put a race at Roush Creek, my favorite uh, Northeast Park, and like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, Something my body tells me that I'm done years. throwing my race car <laughs> at rocks and trees. Yeah. But Roush Creek, man, that's a different animal. I don't know. So. I definitely am not going to be, as we did not this year, because of the whole format change and everything like that. I mean, there was a lot of people that just didn't race this year. And we did a couple, and we'll do this last one. Um, so, you know, I know the plan is now to go to the desert. I know we're probably going to end up doing the desert challenge at KOH instead of the actual hammers. We'll do the Toyo Desert Challenge the week before. Uh, looks like Jeremy Pierrick from Rock Crawler Suspension and I are going to hop in the car together for the Mint 400 and share 
duties there in Jeep speed. We will not be racing it in an Ultra 4 class. We'll be racing that in okay. Jeep speed, I believe the 2700 class. Um, <clears throat> they did vote in the 4600 class. I think they're given for next season. They're changing the air filter rule. They're changing – or maybe they didn't change the air filter rule. They changed the internal bump stop rule or the IBP rule, internal bypass rule in the shocks, which you can't tell from the outside anyway. So they just kind of no. let that go. And then I think they're changing it. You can go to a four-inch uh, a four inch bump stop next year instead of limiting it to two. And then they say the 37s are coming in 2026. Okay. I mean, that's so, a, you know, that's a I'll huge keep my eye change. on that. So I'll keep yeah, my eye on that. We'll see. And see, the nice part about having a banded 4600 car is in a couple of years, it's still a banded 4600 it's still a car. 4600 car. Uh, so they're, they're not going to put any more restrictions on 4600. They're only going to open them up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah it, well, and I'm never going to I'm never going to hack and stuff on 4699 anyway, or maybe no. next year's 2799. Um, just because I already know when that vehicle retires from racing, that's just going to be my personal wheel and rig. Yeah. You know, we'll change it up a little bit. We'll put bigger big boy tires on it, and it'll just be my wheel and rig for the next mm -hmm. uh, who knows as long as probably as long as the JL platform exists. Um, yeah, that'll be my personal wheel and rig because obviously the four by E, you know, we, that'll stick around for another year to year and a half. Obviously, um, for some marketing, you know, marketing partnerships that we have on that. But after that, you know, I'm not going to keep a four by E forever. That's not going to no. happen. Like it does good things, um, but I'm going to do something else, and then. Yeah. You know, we'll see what comes up. Maybe it's a maybe it's something that Toyota puts out. Maybe it's a Bronco. Maybe it's another Gladiator. Who knows? Um, but it's certain. You know, I'm not going to keep that one forever. So that's always been the yeah. plan for 46.99 was to race for races. You know, however long I wanted to, um, or if my desire to racing outlasted 46.99, then we would just do another race car, and 46.99 yeah. would still get retired into kind of personal wheeling status because um, it doesn't need anything else. No, you know, we change the tune. No, we load another tune in the computer, and we start running it on different fuel, and it's fine. You know, I can yeah, I can absolutely. run premium in a fuel cell, and it's fine. Yeah, and then there's um, very few things with forty six ninety nine that I think would need to be changed to make it a very 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 reliable wheel and rig that you can just bring out anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Just, you know, I mean, it still be won't be mufflers are probably one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you God, want people to come so on the trail with you, you might want to quiet yeah. it down just because uh, that sucker's. Or I'm gonna, or I'm gonna tail gun every single trip I go to, which might yeah. be a good way to get me out of leading trails a lot. That might be, that I mean, might be good. Maybe. But, eh. um, but you know, and then I look forward to putting it in stuff like, you know, a big one. I want to go. I want to go to Trail Hero really bad. That one just yes, wrapped up actually. Absolutely. Last weekend, right? They just wrapped that up out in yeah, San this, Hollow this past weekend. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I really want to go to that event. Yeah, that's I, a, I definitely have the, the FOMO. List. You know, it's a trail event. There's a vendor show out there. It's every October in uh, St. George, Utah, which if if you want the simplest explanation of what St. George, Utah is, it's Moab with a Walmart. Like that's yeah. about, like, it's Moab Without the hippies. with stuff. Without right? the hippies. <laughs> um, so it's it's got town stuff like there's a Walmart, yeah. there's a Target, there's a hospital. Like it's a full on city and you're an hour and a half from the outskirts of Vegas. So, yeah. you know, you could have a vehicle shipped to Vegas. You could drive it up. You could go into Vegas. You could, you know, it's, it's a little, I think it's like 93 miles. And it's a really easy drive. You just go up Interstate 10, I think is whatever, whatever the interstate is. No, it's not mm -hmm. 10, but whatever it is. And uh, it's a super easy drive. Uh, it's a beautiful drive. And uh, you get you know, 10, 15 miles into Utah and boom, you're in St. George. And there's hotels and there's Airbnbs. And then the wheeling area is actually a state park. Yeah, with like this awesome lake. It's it's pretty cold water, from what I understand, but at Silver Lake State Park or Silver something, whatever it something. is. Something. Um, again, I need to go so I can know all of these things, and that's actually in Hurricane, I think, which is like fifteen miles north, fifteen minutes out, oh, out of. You said it wrong. Hur sorry, Hurricane. 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 Hurricane Utah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really know this, funny though Utah that has I've its seen... own hockey team now. Yeah. I've, it's really funny that I've seen kind of a shift. The FOMO used to be EJS every year. Um, God, not anymore. <laughs> everyone, everyone wanted like hated to miss out on EJS, and now people are like, I don't really care about EJS, but like Trail Hero is the one that everyone's getting FOMO now. Yeah. And I think I I'm gonna kind of call it right now and a little bit early, but I feel like Hurricane Utah and St. George is going to be the new Moab moving forward. 
Um, I'm, I'm hearing more and more about events that people want to do there, more trips, more wheeling trips. Uh, Trail Hero gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. That's um, for sure. The the local government loves Trail Hero. It brings in a ton of business to the local economy. Mm-hmm. And instead of doing what you know, Gr- and what Grand County in, in Moab is doing um, and trying to shuffle everybody out, um, they're actively bringing people in. And I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, Trail Hero and Sand Hollow in general just is absolutely on my bucket list for a place to hit. And I would love to have the LJ out there whenever it's done. You know, I think that place is Moab's to lose. I mean, Moab is still mm-hmm. Moab. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I think it's just because, you know, St. George, all those trails are like around one U-shaped rim. Yeah. Right. Like it's all pretty close where with Moab, I mean, there's hundreds of miles spread over mm-hmm. thousands and thousands and th- just hundreds of thousands of square miles. And it's so open. I mean, you go back into Sun Valley, there's there's everything from go get lost for days and days and days and days to go get some of the most hardcore rock stuff you're ever going to see. So it's def- I think first place as far as like Wheeler's Paradise, it's Moab's to lose. Yeah. Now, if if Grand County screws around, and I think it's more city of Moab than it is Grand County. I really do. I know there's some differing opinions on that, but I think it's Moab over Grand County. I think there's some politics there um, at play. Um, I did hear that there's some roads. I don't know exactly which ones, but I know there were some roads that were closed already that are now being reopened. That we're okay. going to gain, news. regain some access to. Um, not like the rock trails or anything, but that that some of that's coming back. And there's been a lot of kind of government back and forth. There are a lot of people that are advocating to keep those trails open, and there's some pretty powerful people that are doing that. So there is a back and forth in Moab. So I think as long as Moab stays open, mm-hmm. I think Moab stays number one. And I think that's probably a good thing because Moab can handle that many people. St. Yeah. George can't. St. George can't. That's true. The town and city itself could probably handle pretty close to like an EJS style event, but there's not enough trail out there. There's just mm-hmm. not. Um, you got to get out of there. Now, there's some pretty awesome overlanding stuff once you leave St. George. You know, you oh, go yeah. up to Zion, you can go up to Bryce, you can go, there's all kinds of stuff, man. And southeast Utah, you know, Hurricane and St. George is like southwest corner. Mm-hmm. But it's not like Utah is 500 miles wide, right? It's, you know, it's not that wide. Yeah. Um, but once you get out of there and you head kind of northeast, east, there are some absolutely epic overlanding and some seriously get lost and don't see people for months kind of places. Yep. Um, and it doesn't take many searches on YouTube to find some of the big overlanders you know, they're making a lot of content in Southeast Utah and they still don't see each other. Like it's yeah. insane out there. So I think that would be really, really cool um, to do that. I, you know, and I'm not an overlander per se. I am more of an off-roader, but Hey, we're doing, you know, we're doing the, um, we're doing the outlaw off-road overland adventure next year out in Colorado and Utah. So, I mean, yeah, Utah's got some, some good stuff. So I did talk to <laughs> Jeremy at rock crawler and they've got, they've got the schedule for two events. Um, mm-hmm. I can't say the dates. There's a Texas event next November. Texas. It's going to be freaking awesome. Um, I can say that. I'm not allowed to say dates. I don't think so yet. Not without asking him first. And I know when the dates for the mob are going to be, which is going to be based out of Buena Vista. It's only going to be like a three-day thing. Um, but there's going to be a Holy Cross ride. There's going to be a Carnage Canyon slash Chinaman Gulch ride. There's going to be a nice day on 4th of July where we go up over Independence Pass on Independence Day. So that's what we got next year. And then we are going to be doing the Outlaw Overland Adventure, which is all over, which is all, I say 96, 97 percent off road from Colorado Springs, Colorado over to Moab, finishing in Moab. And we'll we'll get on the Grand Mesa out in western Colorado and we will finish on the Rim Rocker Trail, which leaves, which starts in Montrose, Colorado. And we'll end that coming into uh coming into Moab, the north side of Moab. Nice. So northeast side of Moab. Um, over by, and we'll probably end up somewhere in Sun Valley or Arches or something like that. So we got that going. Um, we'll have the official link and all that. That's going to be a very, very limited sign-up thing. Very, very limited. Yeah. I think I'm only going to let probably 14 rigs plus me in on it. Yeah, I think that we're sounds... going to keep it to 15. I think yeah, I'm going to keep it to 15. I think I've kind of settled on that number. Um, I think we can do 15. But that's a that's an event that you're not going to have to be like super built to do. Like, I may take a truck with a rooftop tent on it. I haven't decided. Yeah. Um, but I may take the four by e with like my gazelle tent. You know, who knows? We'll see. So looking forward to that. It's going to be that's going to be awesome. And of course, we got trail days next year again, um, the weekend after Veterans Day. No, Labor Day. Sorry, or September 11th, the weekend after September 11th. 
uh, which next year I think September 11th is the Friday. I think that's it. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think so. We'll deal with that later. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go into out, we'll go into 03 first, which is Outlaw Off Road Overland. So, 03 mm -hmm. Adventure first, which will be next, the end of, we're going to start it like the last day of June. It's like June 30th or June 31st or June 29th or June 30th. And then we'll end in Moab because there's not going to be, there's really not going to be any overlap between the people that do Overland and the people that go to Mob. Because like the people that are going to go to a mob are going to be like rock crawling. Like I will probably be the only crossover vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to stop in Moab and be like, all right, now I got to drive back over to Buena Vista, Colorado, which is a <laughs> which is a beautiful drive. Uh, it's not a short drive. I think I think it's like five hours from Moab back over to Buena Vista. So it's not a short drive. Um, but I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful drive going along the river there, Gunnison, Colorado, and some absolutely outstanding freaking places that I, I can't wait, can't wait to just do that. So I'm going to have fun there. So. Um, and then we've got more local and more right now. We got Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam coming up. Yeah. Like right around the corner. A week from this episode is the vendor show. <laughs> it's Friday and Saturday of next week. And no, it's, I'm sorry, two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. I was about next to say, week don't, is don't do the that race. to me right now. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> My schedule's two weeks, messed two up already. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. So this episode yeah, is uh, October 11th. So it's October the. 25th and 26th are yeah, the so yeah, uh, the vendor two show. Weeks. Yeah, two weeks from two weeks from the show drop and two weeks from today. Um, awesome, no, awesome show. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's an example. You know that show was really really kind of mid sized regional until COVID, mm -hmm. and then NS Promos Chris who runs that for NS Promos down there in Myrtle Beach, they switched it in the COVID year, and they said, well, we can't do it April because that was when you know the world was coming to an end. And they said, well, we're going to do it and we're going to do it in October. And it was awesome. Like, and everybody was like, well, okay, fine. It's just because everybody's wanting to get outside. But no, it's continued to grow oh, yeah. every year. And I was texting Chris a couple days ago, earlier this week. And I was like, you know, one thing I really like about, what, about you and what your event is, and you've always shown an ability and a desire to alter it just a little bit every year based on what you see. You're not mm -hmm. somebody that runs an event and just you're, you're closed off, you're walled off. You don't listen to input. You, input, you don't listen to anybody else. They always change. He's always tweaking the the vendor layout a little bit because it is first and foremost a vendor show for the, for them, and yeah. we appreciate that. And of course, they got the big you know the big one of the biggest, if not, it's probably the second largest obstacle course other than Jeep Beach that you're gonna find. I think they may be. Nah, Jeep, Jeep Beach is freaking now. way big. Yeah, Jeep Beach is bigger only because it's in the infield at Daytona. Yes, and but they have more money. Year, to they spend. they moved it around. Yeah. So I don't they had a little bit anymore. less room for the obstacle course and more vendor room and trying to put people right on the track uh, at the detriment of being a smaller obstacle course. Whereas Myrtle Beach is like, how can we, use how can we make more this bigger of this space? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, uh, it's at the beach. It's in October. Myrtle Beach loves it because it's technically kind of getting into their downtime, their off season, mm -hmm. right? The weather is usually high 70s to low 80s. You yeah. know, Airbnbs down there, it's, it's the typical North Carolina, South Carolina beach town. You're mm -hmm. not going to find a lot of chain hotels. It's a mm -hmm. lot of condos individually owned and rented out. A lot yep. of that. It's 90% that. Um, but, I mean, I think mine is like, I think I got mine for like 105 a night. Like, find, and it's, and it's a two-bedroom, like 18th or 17th or 18th floor on overlooking yeah. the beach. Like I walk out my pat, I stay here every year, but I go out on my pa my patio and I'm I think it's 17 floors up, and I look right and I see I'm at I'm and it's my parking lot right next to me where the beach crawl ends, and I can see down to the pier and I, all that stuff. So I can't really ask for anything more. And if I walk out the 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 roadside, I could walk to the event. It's two blocks mm -hmm. away. Yeah, and you walk right by a really really good pancake house. So. <laughs> And then, of course, you know, <laughs> 20 minutes up the road, kind of North Myrtle is where we do our thing. We'll do it again this year. Uh, they've already posted about it on social media. If you follow Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam, we're going to be doing our party again at Crooked Hammock Brewing. That's kind of become a tradition now. I think now it is the official Saturday night after party of it is. Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam. It is. Which is kind of freaking cool. That it started as just like, let's have a party there like four years ago. It was it was the year after. It was, it was 21 when, or 20 mm -hmm. when COVID started. Yep. 20 or 21. And to see what it's become last year was freaking insane. There it was, man, it was shoulder to shoulder. The music was going. The band was awesome. They were playing some great tunes, at least for my old butt. They were. I, I, I dug it. 
<laughs> they were bringing out beers. Like, they got the playground out there for the kids. I mean, it was for everybody. That popcorn store probably never saw so much business in a night. <laughs> no, especially that time of year. <laughs> uh, and shout out to Crooked Hammock Brewery in Mer- North Myrtle Beach because their brew staff. <laughs> Dude, they bring it. They, really, I, uh, they man, bring it. I know they they're bring bringing it. back Jeep Fuel, uh, which was uh, it was one of their specialty cocktails. But, that was so good. Uh, it I've looked weird. Al- it, it looked a little weird, but it's delicious. It weird, but it but I've good. already it confirmed with. Uh, I don't guess say it. The, don't the you? Don't that, you get my hopes up? <laughs> don't you get my hopes I've up? I've talked Caleb. with one of the guys at a uh, at Chris Is it Cameron. official? We stayed in touch. Uh, Is it Booberry, official? Booberry will be back. Yes. Fourth year mm. in a row. Uh, yes. I've made sure of it, and they're like, "Yes, so we are, good. We are bringing Booberry <laughs> back." And I'm like, "Yes, That's so good." Um, so I will. Oh. <laughs> I will take another. For those of you of that don't know, Booberry, I, it's a it's a some kind of berry sour, right? It's or a berry, berry gozer blueberry or sour, like that. and then it does not taste like a sour at all. And it's not, and it's not really that sour. Um, no, but it's just their seasonal, their seasonal beer, whatever, for like Halloween, and um, but we kill them on the Booberry and the Jeep fuel. <laughs> we absolutely murder the Booberry. I was like, I think now yeah. it's all we drink. Like, oh, just bring more. Bring bring just bring more. Just you, somebody yeah. more Booberry. Yep. It's so freaking good. It's like that dark blueberry, blackberry color. It's so it's so good. It's, it's, it's very, very delicious stuff. It is uh, one of my it is one of my favorite events of the year. I used to say that about PCB and Florida Jeep Jam, which I still love that. Love you, Jamie. Mm-hmm. But it's you know, going down there for me is tough because of the schedule around that's in that time between, for me, between EJS if we go, and then what has been Mob Moab for the last few years. Yeah. And there's been a race. Yeah. Like this year, it conflicted with the Kentucky race, and it just doesn't mm-hmm. work. You know, next year, maybe it does. I don't know. I know Mint 400 is a little earlier. We probably will go to EJS, which will be early. And I, if there's a race in Ultra Form Kentucky in April, who knows? Who cares? I'm not, I don't know. I'm not going. So it may be, you know, Two years ago, I took the family. We made it a vacation. You know, he was in kindergarten at the time, and I said, look, this is probably going to be the last time that we can do this and just pull him out of school for a week for no other reason than going to a Jeep show. And we did it, and we stayed at a water park. It was one of the greatest family trips I think we've ever had is just me, my wife, and my son. He loved it. Beach bum. It was it was beach, water park, beach, water park, water park, water yeah. park, beach, water park, water park, water park, food, water park, water park. <laughs> that was his day. Like, that was his day. He's like, yeah. you want to go to the Jeep show and see dad? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> and he did come see me, and he was wanting to go, can we go to the water park? The kid loves water parks, yeah. and I don't blame him. So that is another one of my favorite shows, but Myrtle Beach is just so close. It it's is. It's three and a I half mean, hours. Yeah, we can get there very quickly. And for me, I go there several times anyway a year because they have a really awesome – um, RV campground down there. It's a RV resort mm-hmm. for bigger, you mostly bigger, you know, fifth wheels, class A's and all that. And I have a fifth wheel and it's sun resorts down there in, um, whatever that town is, the sea town as you're coming into Myrtle beach. But, uh, we go down there because inside this RV resort is a big water park for the kids. And we went there a couple times this year after we bought the fifth, we got rid of our small camper much earlier in the year. And now we have the fifth wheel, which we've had this year. And we've gone down there several times, and he loves it. And it's really super safe. Like, you go out and ride bikes. Like, he's learning. He would learn to ride a bike, like, in sun resorts. Like, it's just – it was so great. So I just love Myrtle Beach down there. I bought a mountain bike down there last time I was down. I like that area. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's too touristy. Certain times of the year, it absolutely is. Oh, it yeah. absolutely is, 100%. But, uh, you know, if you go and you stay out of Myrtle Beach like we do when we go with the camper, or you go for Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam like we're about to – in October, you know, you can get into pretty much outside of going up to North Myrtle, you can get into any restaurant you want. Yeah. You know, the rates for accommodations are great. So if you're, if you're in earshot of this podcast and you're in the Southeast and you feel like making that drive, even if you don't feel like making that drive, you should make the drive. Um, you gotta look at, um, you have to look at Myrtle beach, Jeep jam. You just got to. I love and it. Who so doesn't much. love a beach trip when it's nice and cool and not tours right. packed? You know, off right. season. I love off, off season beach trips. It's it's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, so definitely. So let me give forward. everybody a little. I got to. I got to. This is fun. It, you had no idea this was coming. No. So I just got a text on my phone. Of course, I can see it on my watch. So the running joke with me is vehicles, right? Like I'm always, mm-hmm. I, I trade out of vehicles too much. And of course, earlier this year, I bought a 2024 Chevy 2500 ZR2, badass truck. I love the truck. 
I like it better than before. In fact, I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, do you, do you think that rides better? It's IFS. And she said, yeah, absolutely. It's way more comfortable just driving around town where it's, it's almost become a daily driver to me. Now, today I'm driving the Jeep. Yesterday I was driving the Jeep. But I'd say 70, 75% of the time I'm driving the Chevy. Now, I still have my old Ram from years ago, but that's pretty much just turned into a shop truck. Now, I don't remember the last time my butt touched those, those seats. Yeah. So for me, it's pretty much – I pretty much split my time between the 4xe and the ZR2. And, of course, with the ZR2, it pulls the race trailer. It pulls the camper. It pulls – we have a gooseneck that we pull stuff to shows. Like, it pulls everything. And I bought it thinking that there was going to be certain suspension things coming for it, and that did not come to fruition. So I said, well, dang it. You know, I want to do shocks. I want to do the stuff that we do, right? Like, we don't, because yeah. trucks, we don't take a truck to a Jeep show, but we definitely take these trucks to boat shows, RV shows, all that. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. we want to modify them. We definitely want to modify them up and show people what you can do. You know, wheels, tires, suspension, sidesteps, airbags in the back, you know, bed covers, all this stuff, you know, hitch stuff, all that, all that good stuff. And uh, so it's come to my attention the last couple of weeks that basically everybody who was working on designing stuff for the ZR2 specifically, because the ZR2 is already bigger, is now not going to do it. Mm. And the issue there is if – now, can you go buy a kit from Cognito for a Chevy 20 and put it on the ZR2? Yes, absolutely you can. Yeah. But it's going to yield you about two to three inches less than what a given kit would yield you normally. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But then why are you going to spend all that money and get rid of these shocks that now you really can't do anything with? So I was looking at – I was kind of running numbers on, you know, do I just – Take off the stuff that makes it a ZR2. Sell, is there a market to sell those DSSV really high dollar struts and shocks to somebody who doesn't have a ZR2 and go out and buy something from Cognito or whatever or, you know, BDS or something like that? Which be, for us, it'd probably be BDS. Or do you just get rid of the truck and get a comparably equipped 2500 LTZ Z71 High Country or something like that? So yeah. they were one of the dealerships was texting me an, an offer to buy my ZR2 <laughs> and and sell me this blacked out apparent this it's uh it's called red hot it's a red hot color yeah but okay. like everything on it's blacked out and I'm like y'all don't freaking tempt me <laughs> we'll go buy this damn truck <laughs> but they're like yeah when can you come out and test drive I was like y'all don't understand like listen to me what I'm telling you I don't need to test drive it I drive that truck every day I know yeah. exactly how it rides um and, and I really don't care about the shocks or anything because that would be the only difference. And it will be a little bit lower because I'm going to change it. Like I'd throw a BDS kit on it, you know, and probably toss, toss, some, toss some method wheels on it, be method or race line. Um, and uh, I don't – you know, it's got fuels on it now, but everybody does fuels, and I've done a bunch of fuels, so I think next is going to be method to the race line. And then I think the tires are going to be that new Toyo RT Trail. Yeah. RT – no, RT Trail is Falcon. Anyway, the new Toyo, um, the new Toyo is really, really nice. And we just recently put a set of Falcon AT4s on the wife's expedition. I really like those too. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I might be having a new truck. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't design a wrap for the last one. I think well, you stopped asking after a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was never going to put graphics on the truck anyway. And and when I'm towing, it's like a big billboard to state troopers. They're like, hey, pull me over. I'm commercial. And we don't mm -hmm. want to do that. So that's why we pulled all the graphics off the race trailer. We put on. We don't want to think we're like some commercial going to a show to like sell T-shirts, and because we're not like that, we're not we're not a mobile retail location. We don't want people to think right. that we are, and I don't want to raise any more attention than I already do with you know a thirty-two foot you know black trailer out back. So we'll see. You know, we'll update update on that at that to come. I got to run finish running the numbers and see which is better financially. But apparently, these ZR twos are still they're not hard to come by, but they're not easy to come by. Mm -hmm. So that is helping to bump the value up. And I got a stupid deal on it when I bought it because it's a dealership I bought stuff from before and uh, it, it may work out where I, I don't lose anything <laughs> like and awesome. I might even be able to take some of the stuff that we installed like the airbags and the amp steps off the one I've got mm -hmm. and move them over to the new truck so that would save me might not save, might not save me time but it would definitely save me money so we shall see we shall see but that's if you see my if you see my watch face light up for the rest of the episode, <laughs> it's the dealership trying to convince the dealership you. <laughs> is the, there's two dealerships that one has one has the red hot and one has like a blacked out one, mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens there. I, I I don't think the numbers will work out in favor of buying one unless the trade in on the ZR2 is stupid. Um, but you know, we'll see. 
And then, and then that text message was my wife asking me if we were going to break open a bottle of wine tonight. So it must be one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> it must be one of those days for her. And she's going to hear this because she listens to the episode. She's going to be like, I know yeah. when you were recording because I know when I texted you. Yep. <laughs> like, maybe it'll be over that bottle of wine, baby. I don't know. Uh, did I get all the events? Did we get all the events? I think that's it, right? I want to say that's all the events. Um, it's coming. The, the, only end, thing else the end of the year's coming. Think of. Um, yeah, the end of the year's coming. I want to say Outlaw Charlotte. Yeah, has uh, one more Gears and Beers left for the season. Um, that's uh, Oh, shoot, that's today. <laughs> um, Sweet. That is this afternoon. We try to release podcasts as early as in the morning as we can. Um, yep. That'll be today, 6 p.m. at uh, Primal Brewery in Belmont, North Carolina, so just south of the shop. Uh, Outlaw Nashville is doing their Gears and Beers on Monday. On Monday, right, um, yeah. And now we're getting, like, super local. Um yeah, other than that, I think those are those are the events for the year, uh, unless we decide to uh, do another quick wheel in trip. Um, I know we do have a, well, we can kind of talk about this now. We've mentioned it before. Uh, a Warren um, mm-hmm. hosting, Warren is actually hosting a, a recovery um, class for us in November. Um, location TBD, I think. I think we're going to try to do that at URI, right? Yeah, I think we're going to do it at URI. That's Brad and I are going to be running that. Brad Goodfellow from Warren. Uh, he lives pretty local here. And of course he's, he's part of the race team as well on the Warren side, uh, Warren and factor 55 been a great partner and sponsor of 4699 for quite some time and are big on 4655 as well with Sergio doing that. I think Sergio is actually gonna be running uh, co-driver duties from what I hear from John, hmm. uh, John Schaefer and side note for those little shout out to John, be thinking about John dude was dude. I think he's out of the hospital and I was trying to get out of the hospital. Dude went into the hospital with kidney stones. And yeah, they kept zapping him, kept zapping him. He's like, dude, they need to get these things, these little devil marbles out of me. <laughs> this <laughs> sucks. Marbles. I'm like, bro, we're getting old, man. And and John's yeah. a little older than I am. And I'm like, bro, we're getting old, man. We can't, you know. But he was in good spirits. We were texting about uh, nationals coming up. Uh, so it looks like 4655 is not going to be at nationals. But 46, oh, orange. Old oh, orange. <laughs> is that car ever going to die? I don't think it's no, die. especially when you got Schaefer and yeah. Sergio in that car, it'll never. So die. it'll be fun. Like we've got, um, looking at the list of forty six hundred cars coming. It's man, it's gonna be Solid tough list. for me to leave there, wanting to leave because it is, it is like the old crew back together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you know, it's Mick. Mick said he's coming. It's Derek Orsler and the FJ. God, I love that dude so much. Yeah, he is the biggest shit talker in the world, and I love him so much. <laughs> Cause like he'll tell you like he'll tell you how it is, man. I love that about him. Um, Tom Fabrizio's coming. Uh, John Rance is going to be there in his Bronco. Um, I think Alex Fleming from Sherpa um, in the and their Forerunners coming. Like this is a legit forty six hundred lineup. And of course, John's yeah. bringing forty six eighty eight. I'm super looking forward to battling those guys out there it's on the prairies. They're talking thirty two to thirty five mile laps. So it's like. Kind of like Havasu was last year to wrap it up, mm. and I cannot wait. That really the the layout of that and the list that I saw because I didn't sign up for the race till four or five days, three four days, three four five days ago. Mm-hmm. We didn't release it. We didn't even release that we were thinking about going until one week ago. Yeah, because I was kind of eh, let's see if this is going to be if this is just going to be for performance trying to come in and kick everybody out of town. What's the freaking point? Mm-hmm. And if they're just going, I'm, I'm not going to go throw myself in rocks and trees for that. Um, so, but it wasn't, it's not that they said, oh yeah, it's going to be two laps. And I'm like, two laps. And they go, yeah, the laps going to be 32 to 35 miles. I was like, register for <laughs> USA.com sign yeah. up. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to be there. That one sounds good. Sounds like Yeah. A good, and then saw the list. Time. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't done nearly enough racing this year. So and we're still holding out. We may, um, we're either going to do, I may do the endurance race in Texas in December. But we may also do an, uh, a wheeling event for Wind, uh, Windrock again for Outlaw. I know we've got one more Outlaw 101 or uh, Outlaw Off Road 101 class coming up uh, in Greensboro for the Triad area of North Carolina. We just had one down in Charlotte, and then we've got the uh, we've got the Warren class that's probably going to be at Uari with a little bit of class time in the field in the morning, and then some application style, some some physical. Let's go get out there and let's see what this looks like in the real world type stuff. Yeah. Um, possibly in the afternoon for a smaller group. Obviously we don't want to put 25, 30 people in one group out on the trail. So, um, so we will have that released in the next couple of days, but again, that's going to be a limited thing too. And that's going to be geared more towards beginners. I don't want a bunch of rock crawlers out there 
um, that don't listen to recovery advice anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm a re- myself involved, myself included. <laughs> this is all of this yeah. stuff that's coming it's, for us is more geared, yeah, geared towards the beginner, mm-hmm. right down to the stock rig who's never been off road before. Like they yeah. just put a winch, like a winch plate and a winch on their stock bumper last weekend kind of stuff. Yeah. And they've never even put it in four low. That's the kind of people that we're trying to serve in that, you know, kind of that. So Myrtle Beach kind of ends the year for us for major shows. And then we've got our own stuff. But we'll talk more about that as more information becomes available. Best way to do that is just follow us on social media, follow the podcast, follow uh, at The Outlaw Off-Road. And, of course, you can follow each of the stores. And you can also find um, any corporate information at theoutlawoffroad.com. So with that, we'll wrap up events. And um, we can't keep the people waiting because I have some um, I have some really good candidates this week for yours and mine's favorite section, adulting is hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I've got some really – I actually have some questions. So now when I go through on Facebook, I've started screenshotting some stuff. And I'm like, well, is this a good mailbag question? Like, is this a legit question? Or is this like, bro or sister? <laughs> like, adulting is hard, but you should know right. better. So I've got several things kind of broken down into it. So with that, let me go into a couple of things. And it does seem like we go into this group a lot, but it is the Jeep Gladiators only group today. It really is. I, <laughs> it's our favorite one. We could probably do an entire podcast series, like every episode of just stuff that we find in this group. Yeah. I, it's so bad in there. That yeah. group. <laughs> it's full of spam. It's full of scams. It's full of the Jeep used auto parts garage people. But there are some real people in there asking real questions. And a guy named Jason, I'm not going to go to his last name and all that, but a guy named Jason in the Jeep Gladiator groups asked the question. Or he actually, he made a wish. He made a wish upon a star. And his wish upon the star was, I wish somebody made some sort of a long arm bolt on without having to cut off any OEM parts, OEM parts or anything. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Can we have a moment of silence for this man's common sense? Yeah, that, uh, those two things do not go hand in hand, <sighs> unfortunately. I, okay. I think what he's referring to people is a long arm. arm. <laughs> long, yeah. Long, long arm. Long, long, long arm. You can't make a long arm and still have the same mount points. No. Like it's not a thing. I, I, you can't. I, and what are you going to bolt to? Like, and then, well, and then if you didn't, okay, we find some magical way to bolt stuff. Then, but then how do we? not have the arms hit the old brackets when they're signed. Like, I don't even know how the, I don't know where in this dude's mind that he's going, this is a really good idea. Like, I don't know. I, like, what is going on here? I don't. And most people, most people on the post are telling him this. And the dude was like getting like legit defensive about it. And oh, no. I don't have the whole post cause I just screenshot the question. And, and my response was very quite simply as like, yo, that's not a thing. Like, that's not a thing. You can't do that. So, um, yeah, Jason, man, you can't do that, brah. You you just can't. I don't. Yeah, you can't do it. I, I don't understand it. <laughs> I think what he, what he really, mm-hmm. and I hope mm-hmm. someone comments. So that was an adult thing is hard. I got a really good <clears throat> question there. I'm just kind of scrolling through some of these. Um, so, yeah, to Jason and Jeep Gladiator only, only group. I know, Jason, adulting is hard, but but you should know better. You you should just know better. Like Do better. Read the stuff you're posting <laughs> yeah. before before you post it. Um, I do think we've lost Caleb's audio. I can see him. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see Caleb, but uh, nobody can hear Caleb. So he can just make facial expressions while I'm making fun of people on on this. Um, so we have another one. Uh, this is not from Jeep. This is not from Jeep Gladiators Only Group. But we are talking to uh, Mr. Mike. I'm going to say his last name because I'm pretty sure this is fake. It's Mike Dickman. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Dickman, um, and it and it's just simply a picture of a of a little spider web cracking the windshield. You know, rock chip hits you, whatever. It's the stuff you can go to Walmart, Advance, whatever, fill in the rock chip, whatever. But it's a picture of his Gladiator or his uh, Wrangler with a rock chip in it. And his and his his post is is very simple. It's very few words, and it just says, "Does dealer cover windshield on twenty three four by e or insurance?" First of all. I don't know what in the hell your year and submodel have to do with what insurance covers. Like, bro, it doesn't cover it on a 4 by 8 but if you had a Rubicon, Progressive would have covered that. 
Like, I don't understand. And it's in a four by E group. So like, what are we talking? Are we, like, do we think it's a diesel? Like, I don't know. That's getting a little nitpicky, but does the dealer cover a windshield? No. Who thinks that? Like, come no, on, man. De- Dealers like, never cover Mr. a Dickman. windshield. So. I know adulting is hard, but you should know better. Like, it's an, everybody knows this. Like, how many times have you been through town and like you you see people in tents set up to be like, oh, we're gonna you know, we're gonna fix windshield cracks and no insurance deductible. I mean, there is an insurance deductible. They're just not collecting it. They're getting the rest of it and they're they're making their money that way. But to post on Facebook as an adult and say, does the to, to not know that. Like I, man, I blame I blame the parents. I I just I blame the bad. It's got to be bad parenting. It just has to be. I don't know. Kev, do we have you back yet? No, nope, well, we don't. Testing have one, two, check, check, check. But at least those of you watching us on YouTube can see his. Um, he's gonna leave and come back. At least you can see some of his funny facial expressions because he's still yeah. Um, let's see what else I got. Do I have another one? Oh yeah, this is a good one. So. This is one that was it was it's been a week or two now, but this is one that specifically named a shop down in Texas, and I happen to be familiar with the owner. It's Exodus Four by Four. Bubba Bryan owns Exodus Four by Four. Ex Marine, sharp dude, doesn't mind trash talking. Doesn't mind trash talking customers. No, oh, no. we'll say customers. People <laughs> that aren't going to be customers. People like you know that that guy that gives you an idiot one star review for no dang good reason. He wasn't ever. Bubba right. will go after them. He will go straight go after them. So this is uh, this is on a Jeep Gladiator, and a guy posted in a group, and he said, any six-speed owners with 538 gears. Speaking of six-speed owners, RIP six-speed in a Gladiator, it's gone. For 2025, the manual in any, in any configuration in the Gladiator is gone. But this guy has one, and he says, in the process of scheduling a regear with Exodus 4x4 and wanted to see if anyone with a six-speed went 538. They aren't sure which one I should choose. He says Exodus is not sure. First red flag. I'm torn between 538 and 513. I live full time in my camper and move look at another picture on here is him pulling this. It's a um, it's a Rockwood Geo Pro and I'm I'm relatively familiar with that. It looks like the 16 or 18 version variant. Um, so it's not light, but the Gladiator can tow it no problem. Um, he moves locations every two weeks. I'm usually in the mountains and west and steep elevations hurt bad, which I can absolutely see that yeah. with a six speed on stock four uh, tens. This is a it is a Mojave, so it's got four tens. For context, I have a six speed Mojave four tens with stock thirty threes. That's a two seventy five, eighty seventeen. You know, or two eighty five seventy seventeen. Your standard Rubicon Mojave wheel and tire right. setup. Um, going to 35s when they're wore out, my trailer is just under 4,500 pounds. Which, again, if you had a Wrangler, don't pull that. Got a Gladiator, you can pull that. Granted, lifting it and stuff, if you lift it and go bigger tires, it's going to actually reduce your tow rating. But still at 4,500 pounds, he's probably okay. Now, I'm hoping that 4,500 is his gross weight with his crap on there and water or whatever. Um, he says, I've already used the Grim Jeeper calculator. I hate that thing, by the way. It's so dumb. For both, and they're just very similar to me. Well, no kidding. From 513 to 538 is a 0.25 difference. 0.25. 0.25 divided by 513 is about 1 30th. No, it's even more than that. This is a very, very small percentage that you're actually going to feel. The average person is not really going to feel the difference in most conditions. Right. Other than takeoff and, and probably some shifting if you're in an automatic, but it's going to be you're, you're, where you're kind of forced to shift if you're pulling uphill. Most other circumstances, you're not really going to notice it a ton unless you've felt both before. If you felt both, you'll know the difference. So he says, I've already used the Grim Jeeper calculator, and they're just very similar to me. Attached is the calculation. Thanks, bud. <laughs> this guy's name's Philip, by the way. Thanks, Philip. Left is 513 and right is 538, not concerned with MPGs. My response to that was actually, look, if you're dealing with Exodus 4x4, just do whatever they tell you to do. Like, these guys know what they're doing, right? Like, Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they operate very similarly to Outlaw. They have a very similar reputation. Like, they know their stuff, right? They build, yeah. they do this. Um, even though poor Bubba's now a, he turned into a Bronco guy, God bless him, and now he's a, now he's a Raptor Ranger guy. I'm sorry, Bubba. He just, he's gone so far from his Jeep roots. I'm so sad. Um, 
But these guys know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. And if they say it, you can pretty much take it to the bank. And Bubba trains these sales guys. So it's not like they don't know what they're doing. So I just said, look, just do whatever Exodus says. And Bubba, <laughs> Bubba messages me and goes, dude, this dude has been so back and forth. Now, this was a private message. And I won't go into everything he said. But the gist of it was, this guy is all over the place. He's all over the map. We know what he needs. Like, And I know what he, he You go... I, we know, I know, Bubba knows, Bubba's sales rep knows, but this guy is just, he is all about this, this calculator and he is all about, and he's going, and now we've all had customers like this, the shop environment, we've all had customers like this, we've all got customers like this right now, and we're all going to have customers like this in the future that get, they get paralyzed by an excess of availability of information. And usually it's bad information, but I also know that the sales guy walked him through like this is what I'm recommending, and this is why. And the guy was just questioning, 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 questioning. And uh, he's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm like, bro, I, I question whether or not I even want to do that, but whatever. I think they ended up doing the gifts. Because, again, this was, this, was a couple, um, <laughs> this was a couple weeks ago now. I just saw this, and I was like, man, the next time we film, I think I was actually in – I might have actually been sitting the day after my knee surgery because now I've – I think I really had knee surgery. I had knee surgery a few weeks ago. I think we're – two and a half weeks after knee surgery at this point. And uh, yeah, so this was like the week after trail days because I had surgery that week and I just screenshot. I was like, I have to have this for later. I have to have it for later. So I did. So that's what I got now. So those are the couple that I've got. Oh, wait, I have to call him. So, so Philip, Mr. Philip, with your gladiator and your 513, 538 question, I know adulting is hard, but you should know better. Like You should. If you're going to pay somebody <laughs> thousands of dollars to regear your Jeep, and you're going to trust them to do that, trust their opinion on what they're telling you to do. Yeah, and don't go absolutely. on Facebook and say they're not sure about what to do because they know what to do. <laughs> like, it they sounds just, like they he's not sure what to do. So what to do and that's where we stand listening. with that. So um, that's all the people I'm going to call out on um, adulting is hard today. I did have some mailbags. And if we have, if we've lost you, Caleb, completely on audio, at least I've got a couple of mailbag questions. Um, you could even text me a couple because I'm, you know, if you're on YouTube, you can see Caleb. He can wave at you. You can wave at him. But yeah, he's waving. Hey. Um, but for right now, it's just me. Um, it's just me answering the questions. It's just me on audio. So maybe we can dub him back in here as I'm scrolling through here to look for my questions. I see some of the stupid reels that I've made recently. Some of them are pretty dumb. Um, okay. So that that is all I've got for adulting is hard. Let's move in here to the mailbag the Friday mailbag mailbag and we've got we've got quite a few today so I will try to keep these answers short because these are the ones that like that's actually a good question or it's actually a good post or somebody makes a comment on YouTube or we find a question that we think is good um, so we'll just we'll just see that and um, so let's do this let's start out um, Mr. Daniel Teat <coughs> excuse me he has a Jeep Wrangler JLU and he says I'm running a high steer setup and my drag link is hitting the frame. Not good. Has anyone ran into this issue? I've heard a fix would be to notch the frame a little. Pick for attention. And he's got to pick. Pretty pretty good looking. It's not a bad looking. It's not a bad looking Jeep, actually. It's pretty pretty nice looking, actually. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. So the answer is pretty simple. So on the JL platform, it was different on JK. At JK, when you got to three and a half inches, you needed to go high steer. Um, the angles were just, the angles were meh. On a JL... I've successfully gone easily uh, four and a half inches without needing a high steer. And you don't want to because like he's like he's this guy's experiencing now, you're having an issue hitting the frame because when you're when you take the drag link that was underneath the knuckle and now you flipped it over, that's a that's about a three inch flip. So now the drag link is three inches closer to the frame because it goes right underneath the frame rail on the passenger side. And on up travel, you can hit the frame. So there's two fixes for that. What I would say first is if you're not lifted north of four and a half inches, which looking at his picture, it's kind of flexed out. Looking at the picture and what I can see, it does not look like he's lifted that high. My first, I would flip it back under. That if you're if you're a two and a half, three and a half, even a four and a half inch lift, I just wouldn't recommend high steer flipping a JL or a JT. This goes for the JT as well. There's just no need to do it. Um, I. I flipped Reaper back in the day uh, when it was four and a half. I flipped it up. I flipped it down. And there really was nominal 
difference. And it was actually Jeremy at Rock Crawler who ended up saying, look, I did the same thing. We just don't think it does. We've got, there's misalignment in there. And the, at least in the Rock Crawler joint, the Steer Smarts joint, the ones that we tested, Steer Smarts for sure. And even now the RPM joint, this was before the RPM steering was out, but there it's the same now with the Apex ends too. Um, you just you just didn't need it if you replace the drag link with a good aftermarket one. There was enough misalignment in there, and that keeps you out of the frame. Now, can you notch the frame if you are lifted that high? Yeah, you can, um, but I'm guessing that you're just not bump stopped right. So my recommendation would be to avoid notching the frame unless it is a dedicated wheel and rig and you know that you're notching the frame for a specific reason and you know what you're doing and why. You can certainly do that on the extreme, extreme end of that spectrum. However, if you are not that guy, if you're definitely stuck on being high steer, bump stop for it. Bump stop the front so that it doesn't hit the frame. And if you're only three and a half, four inches, flip it back under, keep it under, adjust the width because um, we talked about it a hundred times, getting an adjustable track bar, have that adjustable track bar, put that adjustable track bar in there, and you should be good to go. So that is what we are going to do there. Now, I've got another question. This is about a truck. This is from a guy that has a Ford Super Duty. This is a newer Ford Super Duty. His name is Vinny, Vinny Trabuco. And Vinny says, what is your experience with steering stabilizers? Hmm. I got the good and I got the bad. Uh, looking for pros and cons. Obviously, a lot of that. I'm on 24 by 14s. Okay, we're not going to be really good friends. Uh, and want to tighten up my steering, giving it a firmer feel. Thanks. Now, generally, the wider you go on stance, the increase, especially on a solid axle, what this truck is, the wider you go, the more increased steering feel you have. So I'm not real sure what he, how, how much tighter he wants it, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. This is actually one of those times when I could actually see someone, as long as they know what they're doing, I could actually see someone going with like a dual steering stabilizer setup and it making sense. And I told him that. I said, look, this is going to be one of those rare, rare times that I actually tell you this is a steering stabilizer question that makes sense. This, this actually makes sense to me. So um, I would say in this case, on a truck, solid axle, if you do a true dual steering stabilizer that is an opposing steering, because this thing's not going off-road, okay? This is a this is a super duty with 24s, okay? It's not going off-road. I could actually see him doing that if he truly wanted, <clears throat> excuse me, if increased steering is what he actually wanted and effort is what he wanted, then I could actually see that being a thing. I could. I could absolutely see it being a thing. So that's what I'm going to say on that. I, you know, it's not going to be a really complicated answer because we've talked about a um, hundred times, we have talked about um, steering stabilizers to death. And in general, I have... Um, I have, I have feelings on that, but not, not on this one. So I could actually see that being good idea. So <laughs> we'll leave that one there. Um, last mailbag question here that I've got before I go into one last topic that I do want to cover because I promised somebody on Facebook that I would. So last mailbag is from Stacy Fay and Stacy says 2020 Jeep gladiator. I have a misfire on my third cylinder, 61,000 miles on it. What do I do? Um, I almost put this in an adulting is hard because you, you get it fixed. Like, what do you mean? What do I do? Why are we asking Facebook if I have a misfire? What do I do? But I digress. I didn't because of this, because I know of the situation with the camshafts on the three, six. And I know that's what it is. Cause they, she wouldn't be having a cylinder misfire on three. If she didn't have the three, six, this is a known problem for those things. It's not a recall. I know people have said it's a recall. It's a TSB. And unfortunately it does sound like this one is going to need um, more than likely. Generally, if you came to me and you said, oh, I got a cylinder three misfire, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to go, okay, or I, is it just a spark plug issue? Is it a coil issue? Something like that. But unfortunately on these, there's a very, very, very high possibility. And I would still test those things, test the ignition coil. I don't think it's a spark plug issue, not a 61,000 miles with the plugs that Mopar puts in these engines. Um, I would still check the coil. So basically what we would do is we would pull the cylinder three coil We'd swap it with a known good. We'd clear the code. We'd run it, make it come back. <clears throat> and we would see if that spark, if that misfire does what we call migrates. So if we swap two and three and it migrates to two, we got a bad coil pack. If we swap the coils and it doesn't migrate, we got a base engine issue, which generally in this engine is going to be something on the valve train. There is a camshaft issue with these valve. There, there is an issue there. So unfortunately, and it is out of warranty, unfortunately it looks like she's going to be down for a while because that is a... That's a sucky repair. That's not a that's not a fun one to do. But it is unfortunately, 
it is a known issue um, with the three six. So if you're getting that, and it does seem to sh- rear its ugly head um, on cylinder three for whatever reason, I don't I don't know why that is. I think there was a I know why it was a manufacturing issue. Um, so so that's. <coughs> See, Caleb, you're going silent. I'm going to have to do all the talking, man. <laughs> but at least if you're watching on YouTube, you get his facial expressions. Yeah. So on to the last part. The last thing I'm going to do today, I, I came across a post in a local, I think they're based in Tennessee, uh, Jeep group. And I saw it, and I saw a bunch of people answering, like including like a shop owner of a shop that people would know. And it was just bad information. And I'm like, this guy should know better. And I started seeing the answers after answers after answers. Like, okay, we're this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cover this. And this was a couple of days ago. I was like, we're, we're, and I put and I posted on there. I was like, I like this question in the conversation around around this issue. So we're gonna talk about it during the mailbag section on Dirt to Dust podcast. This week episode drops tomorrow. I put this on there yesterday. Um, actually, I think I put it on Wednesday. And I just put the wrong date on there. But either way, I tagged I tagged the podcast. Put it on there. Hopefully they'll they'll see it. And this is a guy named Matt. Matt Tipton in the Jeeps and Wrenches Club main page. And I think that's a club out of Tennessee. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> but I know they're in multiple states. And Matt Tipton's question was, quite simply, how many of you run limit straps on a simple mid-arm slash short-arm lift? Um, the simple answer is not many. Not many. Like, probably less than 1%. And the reason for that is when we got down travel, we got up travel, right? Generally, up travel is going to be, like, mechanically limited, like, your tire hits something, you hit the bump stop, whatever. And we set that up. We, we build for that. Down travel is simply a function of what all interferences can we avoid to where we can max out down travel via the shock, fully extending, fully drooping, and that's where down travel stops. It's not – there's really nothing else there that would stop down travel in a typical Jeep setup, in a typical vehicle setup, period. Unless you got like an IFS with stops, something like that. But on a solid axle setup – specifically on this setup, we're talking about Jeeps, it is generally going to be your shock. Um, some shocks are built to handle that. Some are not. Some are beefy and stout and built to take that, but some are not. Generally, under no circumstances as a regular driver, are you ever going to droop the shock out to the point where you're going to hurt it? It's just not going to happen. If you are a trail rider and you are slow wheeling, you can droop it out for sure, but you're not drooping it out with force, right? It's kind of that thing they say. It's it's never going fast that kills you. It's the suddenly becoming stationary. Um, you know, it's not the shock extending quickly. It's that suddenly stopping thing that's bad, and that's, and that's not a good thing. So generally, limit straps come into play on certainly race vehicles. You know, my 4 by e no limit straps. Race car absolutely has limit straps. But then there's math that has to be done because there's a certain amount of stretch for limit straps that happens. You get generally one inch over every foot. So you have to do that math and you have to break them in and they have to get stretched. You got to know, you know, an 18 inch strap is actually going to end up being a 19 and a half inch strap. So if you only need 19 inches, but you put an 18 inch strap in there, well, you just made the limit strap completely useless because it's going to stretch to 19 and a half and the shock's going to blot them. The shock's going to droop out before the limit strap does. Unfortunately, most off-road shops are not going to be qualified to do this. They're just not going to be qualified. A, a typical bolt-on shop is not going to be qualified to do that. They're not going to know that. They're not going to be able to do the math. They're not going to be able to know the geometry, where to mount them, how to – they're just not going to know. Um, so that's one thing. So most of them won't even say anything because of that. Um, we don't because it does – we don't generally recommend them on mid-arm kits. Um, and he says mid-arm, short-arm. Generally – the arms on older Jeeps, TJ's wide are really short. We call those short arms. Some companies have gone to calling mid arms on JKs and JLs just because they were already longer than what a TJ YJ arm was, and they call it a mid arm. They're all short arm kits. Mid arm, short arm, whatever you want to call it. Any OE is a mid arm slash short arm. You call it whatever the heck you want, um, but it's a short arm kit. Uh, mid arm is something that's come out from marketing in the last five or six years. Um, I know Rock Crawler did that where they called them their mid arm kit. Um, it's still a short arm. Geometry speaking, it's still a short arm kit. Unless you're going in there hacking off brackets and changing the physical geometry to a long arm, it's a short arm kit. Anything else is a marketing term. It's kind of like that triple rate, dual rate, true dual rate, blah, 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 whatever. I don't care. Quad rate, progressive, whatever. Um, But as it pertains to limit straps, again, most people are not going to be going out there and jumping a vehicle. If you're jumping a vehicle, you're leaving the ground, the axle drops very, very quickly, and you have to have something to stop that axle from dropping out of the car, right? 
the shock is going to break eventually. Eventually, the shock's going to have a problem doing that because most of these shock shafts on, v on shocks that we're getting from most manufacturers are half and half, five-eighths. Maybe we get lucky and get a three-quarter. Um, but most of them are fairly, fairly narrow, and they're not built to stop the expedited down travel speed of an axle and all that weighing upwards of six, 700 pounds. They're just not made to do that. So that's how you could break a shock. You could do that if you're going with some gusto. Now, if you're just a trail rider, um, it is very, 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 very rare. How I've seen it, yes, but it is exceedingly rare where somebody would actually bottom out a shock and it would break. I've seen people break shocks, but not because of that. I've broken a shock um, trail riding, but it was not because I drooped out the axle and it pulled the shock apart. It, that, that's not what it did. I did bottom out a shock one time when I had the wrong shock on an old truck of mine, and I knew I had the wrong shock, and it was a. I just thought it would work, and it didn't. So I bought the next size shock up. I just didn't want to buy the shocks. But I, I just replaced it with the right size shock, and we were good to go. Um, so as long as you got the right shock made into the coil, that's going to be a, that's going to be fine. Now, somebody made a comment in the group about, oh, I've seen where people will unseat coils. That is not necessarily an argument for limit straps. That is an argument for getting the proper coil and shock combination. If you have a coil that is unseating because your shock is too long, you have the wrong you have the wrong shock. Now, if you're truly dialed, yes, a shock would I mean, it would almost unseat. I mean, it would just almost. But in 99% of those cases, somebody didn't do that on purpose unless they know what they're doing. I would. I mean, the race car is like that, but you got to know what you're doing. Um so I, I can see that argument, yes. And if you want to maximize droop then yeah, you could do limit shop. You absolutely could. You don't have to, and I would recommend looking at what shock you bought first. Um, but if you want to max shock, because keep in mind, if you've got all that down travel, the problem now is if you've got a shock that is too long, that body is longer. So now when you sit at regular ride height, you've just killed all your up travel. You've murdered your up travel. It's gone. It doesn't exist. Now you're running like two inches of up travel when you should have like four or five. Um, and you think... With motion ratios, you think that doesn't matter? With motion ratios, it matters. Um, so look at that first. Make sure that you've got, you know, 50-50 would be awesome if you want to go fast off-road or even maybe even a bias to more up-travel. But in your typical wheeling setup, let's say you have an 11-inch shock, I, I am a fan of like a 6.5, you know, maybe 60% down, 40% up kind of kind of thing for your regular wheeling. Now, if we're going out in the desert, we're going fast, I'm totally going to change that combination. But you need some up travel for, you know, you're in the city and you hit a curb, you hit a speed bump, whatever, so that you're not, you're not shoving that shock shaft and hitting that thing. But then now you're talking about bump stop. So you can see where the conversation can get pretty, pretty convoluted and pretty complicated pretty quickly. So I don't think that probably not the best place to put it is Facebook because I could talk about this. I could make my own – this, this could be an entire episode about up travels versus down travels versus shocks versus coils versus limit straps versus not limit straps. Is it, is it ver straight vertical movement on a triangulation? Is it, is it, you know, left to right? Cause it's track bar. Um, is it double triangulated? Is it single triangulated? All that stuff, all of it kind of matters a little bit. None of it matters by itself, but when you put it into an equation together, it's all a piece of the equation and it's all a piece of the puzzle to figure that out. So in general, to answer the question, I would say no to limit straps on a standard mid lift, mid arm strap slash short arm kit. Because if you're buying a kit, it's already a coil and shock that are made to go together. The only caveat to that would be is like if you're doing like a three and a half inch rock crawler, but you wanted to go with like a different shock, you know, then you got to look at making sure, you know, look at, talk to people who have done that before and know that, oh, okay, a rock crawler three and a half inch kit can handle. A 32 and a quarter fully extended where a metal cloak really can only take a 31 and a half or something like that fully extended versus collapsed talk to people that have that experience don't go to facebook it's it's different because just because a fox says it's oh it's for a three and a half jl their collapsed and extended links are going to be different than a metal cloak rock sport than a six pack than a bill stein than a carbon off-road than a locked off-road than a than a rough country than a skyjacker than a, whatever they're all going to be different so I would encourage people to look at that too or talk to somebody who understands what those numbers mean. And you can ask them, hey, this is what I want to do. Am I going to need limit straps for this? They're probably going to say no. But if they say yes, then just make sure they know they can do the math 
and get you the right limit straps. Because limit straps, they're, they're only, they're, their only job is to stop the axle from falling out of the car, right? To, to stop that axle from going down so fast that it rips the shock apart and axle goes poof and just goes like this. Because the control arms will stay connected and the drive staff will stay connected. It's just going to tear up crap. You know, it just kind of goes down and mm, up underneath. The, it's just bad. It's all bad. That's when bad things happen to good people. So um, it, it can be a simple answer. It can be a complicated answer. That's my two cents on it. I know that's kind of equivocating a little bit. And I might get called a politician again for doing that. But there really is no easy answer to it. I need, you know, if I had the specifics of this individual situation. And he can re reach out to me, Matt Tipton, if you want to. Feel free. Reach out to me. Reach out to me directly. Um, tag me on the post. Tag me. You know, send me a direct message, whatever. I'm, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Um, but I definitely wanted to talk a little bit about it because, like, there was literally a shop owner on there that goes, oh, you only need limit straps if it's over 43s. And I'm going, what? <laughs> that makes, this makes no sense. Like, it has nothing to do with your tire size. Okay, tire size does not, there's a lot of things that will factor into my equation of whether or not you need limit straps. Um, your tire size is not one of them, okay? It's just not. Um, what your geometry is, what your lift height is, what shock, what coil, all that, that makes a difference. How you wheel, how you drive, where you go, all that makes a difference. Your tire size I, that should be an adulting is hard, but I don't want to like by name call out another shop because we, this is kind of a competitor of one of the outlaw off roads. And this guy just goes out there and just, you only need limit straps over 43s. And I'm like, dude, you're a dummy. So to that guy, if you see it, I'm not calling you out by name and I'm not calling out your shop either. And I'm not going to do that to you. But if you see this, adulting is hard, but you should know better. That's all I'm going to say to that. I'm going to leave that alone. So, well, we still haven't gotten Caleb back. I already miss him. You guys can't see him. I can see him in my little lobby down here on the computer. I can still look. He's laughing right now. He's still laughing. We don't have him. We will have him back next week. Luckily, we got some questions, uh, but we're out of time for today. He did send me some questions. We're going to hit those next week because there's some good questions too, but luckily, I already had enough content lined up so that when we did lose his audio, um, I was able to kind of carry on without him. So um, anyway, thank you guys for uh, putting up with us while we were, or maybe you didn't miss us. I don't know. While we were on a little hiatus, we are going to try to get back here to uh, a little bit of sense of normalcy here. Um, definitely don't forget um, all the people up in Western North Carolina. We've, you know, we've obviously done some uh, on our end, on the end of Outlaw Offroad, along with a ton of other amazing people and amazing other organizations that will not be the last um, that Western North Carolina sees of Outlaw Offroad. We will be we will be there just considering we kind of surround that area and you know we've been up there a lot now so we will be continuing uh to help those guys um do keep following us on the dirt to dust podcast and the outlaw off-road social media channels uh for the stuff coming up about the worn recovery class uh the outlaw off-road 101 class the wheel and trip at war or wheel and trip at worn one will probably be there uh the wheel and trip at windrock probably right after i think we're going to we're looking at a weekend after Thanksgiving to do that because uh, Windrock's pretty cool when it's a little bit cooler but not so cold that it's like iced up on the mountain yet. Uh, even though I've done that too, and it's pretty cool. So just keep an eye out on that. We may we may bring in some of the public on that. Um, we've also got the announcement coming up this month, the month of October, for the 03 Adventure, Outlaw Off-Road Overland Adventure from the <clears throat> for the off-road trip from Colorado Springs to Moab. And then watch, I believe, I would say watch Rockcrawler. I don't know if he's going to release that or when for the Mob Colorado next year and Mob Texas. Uh, we've got over a year till the one in Texas, so no, no, big, no big rush there. And then finally, if you haven't already registered or haven't made plans to go to Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam and you are within a drive, um, you should definitely do that. You should definitely find Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam on your Google machine, and you should sign up to go. Check out the obstacle course. Probably the best obstacle course um, at a Jeep show that I've seen. Um, pretty, pretty freaking cool. Great, great area to be. We've got the outlaw off-road party, uh, the official Myrtle beach Jeep jam an outlaw off-road, um, party Saturday night, uh, two weeks from tomorrow, uh, two weeks from tomorrow. We've got that going on. So going to be, um, a ton of fun. We love it every year. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and, um, I'm here for it. So I, it's a, it's a pretty short drive for me. We may have, I know we've got something cool, really cool being done to the 4xE next week um, while I am racing. Um, so we're looking forward to showing you guys that. We will not show anybody that until Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam. just got to come to Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam to see what that is and what company will be joining us in the booth 
Never before have this has this company joined us in a booth, but they will be here with some very, very cool new product. Um, never, not really seen before in a non company, their company, quote unquote, show vehicle. Uh, but we are going to have it in the 4xe in the booth at Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam that is getting put in next week. And then we'll talk about it a little bit after Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam what it is, but we'll keep it a little bit under wraps until then. So um, we've got some other cool stuff going in there, um, too. We've got some cool new Revolution Revolution gear and axle diff covers going on there for getting our – we just geared it and did axles on it. Now we got to change the gear oil, so we're getting some cool 4xe blue diff covers put on there for, for, uh, for Jeep Jam. We may be bringing the race car. Fingers crossed. We'll see how transport and weather and all that goes. But we will definitely have the 4xe there. We'll have at least one other 392 there. And we will have uh, the Hellcat from Charlotte. And I know Josh has been working on some cool new stuff on the Hellcat. Steelicon 707 will be there in style, making all the whistle sounds from the, the Hell Kitty motor. Um I think that is all I got, and I don't have Caleb here to tell me I'm wrong, and then I'm missing something. So if I'm wrong, I don't know. I'll figure it out next week. Don't know where I'm going to be filming from next week. Um, heading out to Oklahoma for nationals. Maybe I'll take the laptop and we'll film from some KOA campground or something from out in Oklahoma or something. We'll figure it out. But until then, uh, we do appreciate you guys stopping by. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, if you're wa- listening to us on Spotify or Apple, make sure you leave us that that five-star review. Tell us how awesome we are, even if you don't think we are. Make us feel good. Stroke our egos. Make our heads a little bit bigger than the RDR. We're trying to be world's okayest podcast over here, people. Help us doing that. Um, and then, uh, you know, get engaged. Leave us comments. Ask us questions. All that kind of stuff. We obviously want to hear from you guys. Uh, we we drink the hater egg with you guys, too. If there's something you guys got a problem with, we'll do that as well. And then if we can get – I need, like, one more thing, maybe two, and we can start the segment of where Doug was right, where Doug was wrong, and you guys can make fun of me for where I said wrong things. And then, of course, uh, we're going to try and reschedule that interview with Scott uh, from Jeep to get some information on the 2025 Jeeps, what is coming, what isn't coming. Maybe talk a little bit about that Jeep Recon EV off-road vehicle they got coming. Uh, I am hearing hitting dealership lots quarter one of 2025. So we'll talk to Scott about that. Um, and that is where we will leave it, everyone. I have, we have taken enough of your time today. We thank you, as always, for being here. And we will see you on the next episode of Dirt to Dust. You've been listening to the Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime... To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.